So today we get to continue on with part two of our Tijuana testimonies. And so today we're going to have the young man that Jalil just sang his praises on last week, talked about how powerful of a young man that he is. Skylar, go ahead and wave your hand, baby. <laughs> now, now Skylar is working on not being so shy, but what's funny is you didn't know that he was so hilarious. So he's like really funny when you get to know him. It's, it was awesome to spend that time with them. So he is going to go first afterwards. Uh, George is going to come up and share his testimony, and I will close us out. Amen. And then uh, when Terry is ready, we will give her an opportunity to share if she wants to this year, if there's something burning that God has spoken to her heart. But for right now, we, we want to let her be ministered to. Amen. Oh, come on. Y'all can do better than that. Amen. Amen. Terry is a servant of servants. And when it comes to getting the job done, I don't care what it is and who it is. Terry is Johnny on the spot. Amen. So please keep her lifted in your prayers because the testimony that I'm going to share with you guys today is going to help you to understand why it's so important. Amen. All right. Come on, Skylar. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise for our brother as he comes. Wherever you want to go. If you go up there, just don't touch my notes. <laughs> All right, you good. All right, I love you, but don't touch my notes. <laughs> Amen. Anyways, uh, my name is Skylar. So... I mean, I went with Spirit Midwest down to Tijuana. Uh, this was my third year going. My first two years were kind of iffy. You know, I didn't remember them that well, but uh, I was almost like a last minute addition. Like, I didn't really know that I was going until a week and a half or so before I went. But now that I look back upon it, I'm so glad that I went. Um, I was really nervous about going because, I mean, I hadn't seen anybody for three plus years. I haven't been down there for a while. But I do think that my favorite part of the trip would probably be going to the orphanage. Uh, for some reason, I just love playing with kids. I mean... Now that I feel like God has shown me something, and I feel like it would be, it's supposed to be my job to minister to kids. Amen. Because, I mean, I have a lot of siblings. <laughs> <laughs> and countless cousins. Amen. I think we just had another one a week ago. But, and it does make sense because most of my ministry before this has been with kids. I have taught Awana for about five years now, four or five. And I just did CF last year and I taught uh, five day clubs. And I was also a camp counselor, which was a dramatic experience. <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of things that go on that you wouldn't think that would happen. Like, I had a kid bring a lighter in his so-called privacy bag. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Mm. I know, right? Another one of the best parts about going down to Mexico was the tacos. Like, <laughs> the carne ensalada and the auto bottle. So good. And also the ice cream, which their ice cream totally, totally blows our ice cream away. Like, they needed to go down there, like, take a hint. Uh, one of the things that I learned down there is that Oh, I don't speak Spanish. That is a horrible excuse. 
Because you can just go down there and minister to them without knowing how to speak to them. Like, playing with the kids, like, you didn't, you didn't need to know how to talk to them in order to just play with them and be with them, you know, just have a good time. Like, the one girl taught me this. I wouldn't exactly call it handshake, but, you know, seeing it go back and forth, up, down. And you know what? I got the hang of it. <laughs> and I could still do it. I also, I loved feeding the homeless and just sharing the love of Christ because I haven't really, like, gone out and do it. And it's something, it's just so rewarding to see, like, the smiles on their faces. Ugh. I know that every time that I go down there, I grow in a different way each time. Like, like I know, like, up here in the States, like, you know, life is easy, so-called. And, like, I, I get discontented and, like, I start complaining and grumbling about how bad my life is. But then I always look back, I'm like, I'm not living in a cardboard shack, so I think I probably shouldn't be complaining. <laughs> I do look forward to going back next year. You know, I would encourage for you guys to go and try it for yourself because, I mean, just do it. It's such a good experience. And I know I'm trying to get out my mom to go, in, but she's got so many excuses that are <laughs> bad ones. <laughs> and I'm working on some other people. Benjamin's not that little. <laughs> Take care of himself. <laughs> On a last note, I'd just like to thank you guys for all like the prayer and donations that helped make this trip possible. Like our trip down this time went really smooth. Like there was hardly there was hardly any problems and you know what, it's all that prayer and I just like to thank you guys so much. And especially George and Terry and like Jaleel and know she's here and Jody for just like I think that's just Stephanie sorry for just you know like dealing with me because you know I'm I'm kind of different yeah <laughs> there you go <laughs> yes yes anyways just thank you guys for giving me a chance to just share a little and you know what? I got no church to do it next. Heavenly Father, gracious, holy Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day. Lord God, we, we thank you for the opportunities that you continue to lay before us. Lord, we, 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 uh, we thank you that you're a forgiving God. We thank you that you're uh, a God that heals and restores. Lord, we, we thank you that, uh, that you go before us and behind us in everything that we do. Lord, we... Uh, we just owe it all to you, and uh, we thank you on this day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So it's, it's been really hard for me <clears throat> to figure out where to even start. Um, but it started a year ago for this last trip. And, and it even started several years ago be, beyond that. But... Um, the trip has been birthed in prayer, bathed in prayer, and prayers were answered in a mighty and powerful way 
over and over again. Stephanie last week uh, posed the question, was it worth it? And to that effect, I would say yes, absolutely worth it. Worth every penny that was invested, every pizza that was made, every sore muscle, every tear that was shed, every prayer that was put out, it was absolutely worth it. For some of us, um, this was an opportunity to find our voice. For some of us, it was an opportunity to um, improve our leadership skills, our communication skills. Missionaries uh, need to be flexible. And that's been the term over the last several years that we'll put together a schedule and uh, that, it's, that it's literally written in sand because it could shift and it can change at any moment. But this year, we were given the word fluid. And that fluid and George doesn't always go together. It's sometimes hard for me to be flexible. In hearing our voice, <clears throat> one of the sayings that was, was shared quite a number of times, um, probably even more so with some of the youth, was I said what I said and I meant what I said. My yes be yes and my no be no. So with that being said, we need to be careful because um, when we're talking and when we're speaking, we're declaring and decreeing things. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit ahead of myself, though. Let me, let me back up. <clears throat> On a trip like this, um, we want God to use us, but yet we're uncertain of what that might look like. Um, and I know Jalil indicated that at one point, he was wrestling with just that very thing that he didn't necessarily want to be used, but he wanted to be there. But I, I do believe that he wanted to be used. In First um, Corinthians 3, 5 through 9, we hear... Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but minister by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he hath planteth, and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry, God's building. Amen. So what greater partner could we ever ask for? The partner that's going to stand before us and behind us and beside us. <clears throat> also speaks in um, Matthew 9 and 37, 37 and 38. Then he saith unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray thee therefore the Lord of the harvest that he, sh he will send forth laborers unto his harvest. This year it seemed like the laborers were few, but yet the increase was still mighty. On day one, I had my schedule pulled up here, but even on day one on Sunday, 
we, la we landed on Saturday and, and settled in. But on Sunday, first thing we do is we, we head out to the homeless ministry out, on, out near the canal. That morning, there was seven men that, that changed their lives. Seven men declared that they wanted the Lord to be their, uh, Jesus Christ to be their Lord and Savior. Oh, okay. I, five men and two women. So I stand corrected, but yes, seven souls. So there was a party going on in heaven. Hallelujah. Did we plant? Did we water? Or was we the ones be able to, to witness the harvest? Same way. Yes. We had a little break for lunch, and then we bought some fruits and vegetables to take out to different ministries. We went to Anna's Women's Rehab, a drug and alcohol rehab, and... Uh, the ladies there were exceedingly um, prayer-minded. They, they, I would say that they knew prayer was works, um, but that there was question whether it worked for them sometimes. But yet when uh, my beautiful bride Terry shared, kind of set the stage, my Shauna shared, Jody shared, and they shared, and by the end of that time frame that we were there, another eight, another eight ladies stepped forward and gave their life to Christ. Did we plant? Did we water? Or did we see the harvest? <clears throat> of course, the ice cream. Got to love that. So on day two, on Monday... We were at the orphanage. Pastor Daniel and his wife um, started their orphanage back up a year ago. And every day, every minute of every day, they raised 20 children. And they're raising them to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. They have two church services a day while they also educate them and give them playtime. Um, it was truly refreshing to see these children get on their knees and praise God to stand up and say pick me pick me I got a scripture I want to share and oftentimes we as adults don't always do that either truly a blessing to be a part of and it was truly a blessing to witness um, Skyler and my Shauna and Jaleel and and everybody um, we had one group in in the uh, kitchen area or dining room area doing a uh, craft and Bible study and half the kids were out playing in the yard and then they got to switch up. So did we plant, did we water, or did we harvest? The next morning, we were supposed to have a food truck show up, but that kind of got pushed ahead. I think it was on Monday night, we got the first one in and this is one of the things where here at New Beginnings we've talked about um, trying to be in the right position at the right time. And with that in mind, there's, there's one other uh, statement I guess I want to throw out there that for a long time now I've realized that God has created enough of everything. For, for enough for the poor people, enough for, for everybody in this world to have what we need. But he did not create enough for all of us to hoard or to hang on to the blessings or to hang on to the money or to hang on to the, the stuff and not share. So we have to share the blessings that he gives us. We have to share our finances. We have to share our resources, and we have to share our time. That has been a big problem in the third world countries. That distribution line has been disrupted. You don't see, like Skylar talked about, you don't see me living in a tar paper shack. It's by God's grace, because I've certainly made enough mistakes to where I could have. 
with this food truck, we got, <clears throat> we got several loads. It was one semi-load, but it came to us in, in cargo vans, van loads, and there was four of them scattered throughout about a two-and-a-half-day period. But that also took us uh, out of position. Uh, Travis, the director of the base, he was out of position, which took us out of position to where we were unloading trucks in the middle of the night, untro unloading trucks with limited time to, to try to get it done and then get to the next ministry that we had on our schedule. Um, so this is where flexible fluid and George didn't always round out very evenly. Um, so we, we did that. We went to, um, on Tuesday afternoon, we went to the Red Zone Ministry, which most each of, each of the ministries that we went to, we took um, a one-ton pickup, uh, about a half a pickup load of food to each one of the ministries with this food truck uh, that, was, that came in from Open Bible Church in, in uh, Clear Lake. And uh, so with the, with the food truck, it was really a challenge for me um, to, not, to not be out of position and, and let that affect everything that I did. So there was a growth opportunity for me. We went to the Red Zone Ministry and fed the homeless down there, and it's exactly what it, what it says that there's a lot of um, uh, prostitution and people that are being sold into, into various lifestyles, and, um, but we did have an opportunity to share the word a little bit and before we did serve with the, the people there. Once again, on, in, on Wednesday, we so, sorted and separated food. We um, went out to a neighborhood VBS in the uh, uh, in the community there, and we shared there, and we took food and, and fresh fruits with them. Um, So one of the things, as we approached midweek, in the past there's, I've been fully aware that it's kind of happened to a few others and at no part is, do I really believe that this trip is about me, but yet we're a part of it and somehow we're still invested in it deeply. And what happens is there sometimes is a midweek meltdown. We were up late. We were up early. We were working hard. We were going here. We were going there. We were sharing the gospel repeatedly. Um, laughter, tears. Um, that exhausts you if you do it one day a week. That exhausts you if you do it two days a week. But this is a packed week where that happens about every day. And fully being aware of the midweek meltdown that can happen, um, I let my tongue uh, hurt others, my wife included. And uh, for that, I'm sorry. And then in, uh, in a moment of trying to share my feelings, I turned to my wife, and God bless her heart, because I love her to the bone. But what I heard was confirmation of every mistake that I'd ever made from be even being a young father. And I've made plenty. Trust me, I've made plenty. That's not what her intent was. I know that. I know that. But that bounced around in here, and I heard all the wrong voices for, for more hours than I should have, for more hours than I should have. 
And I just kept, it's like, Lord, I know this is not what you want. But I was, I was so close to heading down a rabbit hole to where I could have walked away from all of the ministries. I could have walked away from Spirit Midwest. I could have walked away from the grit reentry, from the prison ministry. And if I'd have started down that rabbit hole, I know, I know where it took me before. And I know that wasn't his plan. I know it. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. And I just kept praying. Like, I know, Lord. I know that's not what you want. Has helped me to see it. Helped me to see it. And eventually, he did. He did. Praise the Lord. Because I have, um, as like Pam said in, in Bible study the other night, I have no intention of handing in my resignation. Amen. So bear with me. I'll still make mistakes, but, but God's got it. Um, so I guess with that being said, I know I still have a heart condition. I know that um, the Lord's going to do more work. And it's my, uh, it's my choice and my decision to let him do it. And that's one that we all got to be willing to, to let him do the work that needs to be done in our hearts and in our minds. In the book of James, James 1, 26 through 27. Yeah. Okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Oh, first, first, I'll share um, 1, 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak, slow to wrath. And then in 26 through 27, if any man among you seems to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. When we speak, we will have to account for each and every word that we've spoken. Whether it's a curse word, whether it's a, a derogatory word, um, whatever it may be, we need to turn to the Lord and and ask him to give us his words and not ours. So this morning as uh, worship was going on and uh, as Kamika was sharing, I felt like they were in the back of my head all week or over the last several weeks even with what they had, with what they had shared. Um, in Matthew twelve thirty four, Jesus says, "O generation of vipers, how can you be? How can ye evil, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks." So out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And even though I had witnessed men and women giving their life to the Lord, even though I had witnessed prayers being answered, and even though I had a, a heart that was filled with joy and, and blessings, yet somehow, some way, 
I still manage to hurt people that I love. How can that be? So there's more work to do. So earlier, the question was, was it worth it? It was worth it. Oops, sorry. A good friend of mine gave me a little book here a while back. And uh, it's been kind of tough to ignore. Um, In the book of Numbers, in Numbers um, 13, 26, and 31, and they went and came to Moses and, and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh and brought back, brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Now if you back up even a few, a few verses before that, when they said they were showing them the fruit there of it, they had cut a branch of grapes. That branch of grapes took two men to carry. That's how much fruit there was in that land. Just one little vine had, had enough fruit that it took two men to carry it. In 28, nevertheless, the people be strong that dwelleth in the land, and the cities are walled and very great, and moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell in the sea by the, and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb, he stilled the people. Before Moses, he said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. And then comes the but. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. So what are we speaking? Are we speaking life? Are we speaking death? In chapter 20, or excuse me, chapter 14, verse 20 through 24. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word, but as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord, because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice. Surely they shall not see the land which I swore unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, and hath followed me fully, him I will bring into the land whereunto he went, and his seed shall possess it. So when Caleb spoke, he spoke life. He spoke not only life over his life, but over his children's life, and over his children's children, and their children. What are we speaking? In 14, 30, and 32, 
Doubtless ye shall come into the land concerning which I swore to make you dwell therein. Save Caleb the son of what was it? Jephona and Joshua the son of Nun. But your little ones which ye said should be a prey them I will bring in and they shall know the land which ye have despised. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in the wilderness. I don't know about you, but I'd much rather have my carcass fall anywhere but in the wilderness. So, was it worth it? Yeah, it was worth it. Every, every ounce of it, it was worth it. One other little thing that I that struck me is, I guess, a little funny. Southwest Airlines, real art comes from the heart. It's just a napkin that they have. And with the, talking about the heart condition, what kind of art's going to, uh, what's going to, what kind of art is our heart going to produce? So... I guess my question and where I want to li- have you think about is what's next? Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. That was powerful. And I'm not going to move past that because I want us to think about what was said. We lined right up. You never saw my notes until you stood up here. And the only thing you can see is my title and my scripture, the opening scripture. And we lined right up through the music, through the prayer, through the declarations that were made. We are lining right up, letting us know that we are completely in alignment with God. This is the message that he needs heralded. Because I've been talking to everyone about the fact that we're coming up on spring. Everyone's getting excited. We're all doing um, spring cleaning. We're all doing things to get our bodies in um, alignment so that we can get excess weight off of us and do what we need to do. You're starting to see the brighter colors come out. And I was purposeful in choosing what I wore today. I wanted to be bright for a reason. Because the thing is, we make the mistake of being bright on the outside, but there's darkness within. We don't deal with the issues that are within our heart. And out of the abundance of the heart, come on, what's the word? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The Bible tells us to guard our hearts with all diligence. Why? Because out of it flows the issues of life. So when I start hearing things come out of people, and I'm not saying that you're possessed with the devil, but I'm saying that the devil has possessed an area of your life. So when I'm hearing things come out of you that don't sound like Jesus Christ, things that are coming out of you that let me know the enemy is in there and he's doing things within you and holding you back. Kamika came over and told me right before she walked up these steps, When I ask you a question, say no. Next minute, you know, I was getting called to the front. I was obedient. Yeah, I know I'm Apostle Stephanie Moody, but she asked me to do something, and I know that if it wasn't from God, she wouldn't have done it. So what is it that's holding you back? What is it that's causing you to stop short of what God has called you to do? What is it that God is looking for you to push aside to crucify within your flesh, that you may be able to bless those that he is in need of getting the blessing to. You are a conduit for Christ. And it's going to take for us to stop being in our flesh and to learn how to operate fully in the spirit. The Bible tells us that those who operate in the realm of the spirit are the sons of God. So what is it that's stopping you? 
What's keeping you from moving forward? What's in your heart that needs to be cleaned up? What spring cleaning has to be done within you right now? Come on and stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Oh, y'all going to get a good sermon next week. Y'all don't let this thing marinate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's about to go down. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, being a part of the nation of Jesus Christ, he said that we are a peculiar people, a holy nation. Who was he talking about? He's talking about us, right? A holy nation. When you profess and proclaim Jesus as your Lord, and watch this, Savior. Most of us only profess that he's our Savior. And what happens is we want to stay the way that we are and allow Jesus to keep saving us out of everything that we get ourselves into. Instead of being the deliverers that he's designed us to be. He didn't release all that power within us. He didn't delegate authority to us for us just to hold it within and sit on a pew. He's given it to us to use. Next week, I'm going to talk about that power. Amen? And I'm going to talk about, very similar to what George talked about, how I had to overcome my own stuff. Most of you know we buried our granddaughter on Monday. Flew back to Des Moines Tuesday evening, got in that night at like 11 o'clock at night and was on a flight at 6 a.m. on Saturday. So let me tell you, we went through some hell just to get over there to bless somebody else. But God showed who we really are and whose we really are to all those who chose to watch. I could have said, no, I need to stay home in grief. I could have said, no, this isn't the time for me to go. But I knew that God had called me to it and that I was being sent on an assignment. Some went and some were sent. It's how it goes. But the reality is this. When you know that you're sent, you walk at a diff different level of authority. But the amazing thing about it is that when you're sent, God has a plan and a purpose, not only for the people that you're going to come into contact with, but also for you. So recognize that as apostolic Christians, which every one of us are, the entire New Testament was written by who? Apostles. So we are apostolic Christians. We're going to get sent to do things. We have assignments and we taught everybody that we came into contact there with, what did we teach them? Say it out loud. I was born on purpose, for a purpose, and amen. That is our mantra. And so we made sure that everyone we came into contact with got the opportunity to know that for themselves. We walked away more blessed than you'll ever know. And so... On next week, I will touch this even more. But for those who know that, and I'm talking to my people online as well, the glory is resting in here real good right now, amen? For those who know, you've been battling, being held back by something. Every time you try to start moving forward, you find yourself stopping short of what God is asking you to do. Some health issue pops up. Your kids start acting crazy. Your husband's doing whatever or your wife. Next minute, you know, all kind of hell is breaking out against you. These are the things that God wants you to overcome. I'm going to say it again. He's already prepared you to overcome them. Before he placed man in the garden in Genesis, everything was self-sufficient. It took care of itself. Read it. It took care of itself. So he, when he placed man in the garden, he placed everything that Adam would need 
in order to care for that land. So if he brings you to something, you've already been prepared to take care of it. The issue comes when we have to walk by faith and not by what we see. So if you have been struggling with your faith, I don't care if it's drug addiction. I don't care if it's lust and perversion. I don't care if it's lying. I don't care if it's starting a business, whatever it may be. You've been struggling with fear over faith. And fear has been winning the battle. If you know that I'm talking to you, don't look to the right or to the left. Come on up so we can pray for you. If you're online and you are in need of prayer, I want you to go ahead and hit that description box. Because now is the time to break this thing so that we don't carry it into the season where we are expected to produce fruit. Dead branches will never grow anything. They are disconnected from the life-giving source. And we must get rid of the dead branches. So do some examination. Check your heart. What's stopping you? What's hindering you? What's holding you back? Let's pray through this together. Now, when we pray for you, our masks are going to be back on. Amen. But we are going to pray and we're going to believe God with you. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. Give the Lord some praise. We are going to believe God with you. When you come up here, come up here in faith. Don't come up here doubting and expecting to go back the same way because we're drawing a line in the sand and we're going to make this declaration stick this time. That means we're going to have to fight our own flesh because our flesh is going to tell us, remember what happened last time? Remember when you tried to do this before? Remember how it turned out horribly? Remember what they said about you? Remember how you failed? Remember how you didn't have this? And then everybody, uh -uh, skip that. Today is the day. Come on, decree it. Today is my day. With you, Lord. Say it again like you meant it. Today is my day. With you, Lord. Come on, and if you believe it, go ahead and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are manifesting the Lord Jesus Christ. I refuse to manifest the enemy any longer in my life. Done with it. We're going to make mistakes. It's going to happen. Forgive yourself. Move on and let's go get them. Amen. There are lives on the line. Go ahead and clap. That's all right. Amen. There are lives on the line waiting for us to be in position. Now, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you are in this house or you are online, we want to say a prayer. I'm not going to ask you to be embarrassed and come on out and all of that stuff. I want you to say it right from your seat. We're going to pray a prayer together so that you can confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Understand that he can be your savior and save you from the pits of hell, but you have to now work the salvation process and allow him to be Lord over your life. Okay? That's where your Bible study is going to come in. That's where your reading of the word, your devotions are going to come in. Applying what you know is in the word. I promise you guys, if you work the word, it works. It really works. So we're going to say this prayer. I want everyone to close their eyes right now. Hallelujah. And if you are a person who knows that you need to give your life to Christ. Some of us said it as a kid and we really didn't give our lives to him. Let today mark a different day in your life. Let this be your new birthday or your rebirth day. So we're going to say the prayer together. Amen. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you. God, I praise you. There truly is none like you. I thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for my sins, for the world, because you loved us. But you didn't stop there. You took the keys 
from death and hell. You defeated the devil and you left hell. And you are now seated according to your word on the right hand of God where you are praying for me and all of my family members day and night. I believe this happened and I now receive you, Lord Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. I will walk with you wherever it is that you need me to go. I will trust in you and I will not allow the devil to keep me bound any longer. I thank you, Jesus, for breaking the chains, for removing the shackles from my life. In Jesus' name, I bless you, God, and I praise you. Hallelujah and amen. And if you prayed that prayer, go ahead and shout unto God. Hallelujah. Seal it with the praise. Thank you, Father. So I'm going to say a quick prayer, and those who are up here, we're going to pray with you. Amen. But everyone else, please remember to put your mask on. If you're uh, congregating and, and fellowshipping, I don't mind that. Praise God. We want you to. Amen. We are one family. I don't care what church you belong to. We are the family of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So please feel free to fellowship. Don't be real loud because we're going to be up here praying. But fellowship, hug each other, but put your mask back on. Amen. Amen. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Lord God, we bless you and we praise you, O oh God. There truly is none like you. Father, I thank you for you sitting high, Lord God, and for you looking to the lowest depths of the earth, Lord God, where people may reside because of things that have taken place in their lives, Lord God. Father, that you care about those who are lowly in heart. You care about those who have been uh, uh, held back or in bondage over different things. So, Lord God, I praise you. And I ask that you would cover each and every one of us as we leave this place, but not your presence. I plead the blood of Jesus over every person that is under the sound of my voice, whether they be with us in person online right now, or they are listening to this through a replay. Father, I pray that the anointing would go through and that it would bless every household that it comes into contact with in Jesus name. Lord God, we bind every attack of the enemy that would try to cause people to go backwards as they have already made the confession with their mouth and they have believed in their heart according to Romans 10 and 9 that you are their Lord and you are their Savior, that you have risen from the dead and that you are seated on the right hand of Christ. According to Romans 10 and 9, that's all they had to do to be saved. Now, God, as the sanctification process begins, Father, don't let them overwhelm themselves with trying to take care of everything at one time. Let them pick one thing that you identify they need to work on and deal with it according to your word. As they master that, they can go to the next thing. Lord, we're not perfect, but we are working towards perfection. So we bless you, Lord God, and we praise you. Father, I pray for those who gave their lives to you for the first time, Lord God, that you would get them into a Bible-believing, a Bible-applying, a Bible-working church that is going to push them to the next level, that's going to help them to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we will be forever careful to give you all of the glory, honor, and all of the pra praise, God. Father, we will manifest you throughout the days, and we will go forth and be powerful in your name. We love you, Lord, and we bless you in Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah and amen. Come on, give them a hand clap of praise. Thank you, Jesus. You all have a blessed week, and we look forward to seeing you all on this Thursday. In Jesus' name, amen.